Aaron, you ready? Okay. Uh, I will call this sewage and water billing ordinance advisory committee meeting to order. Uh, Aaron, please call the roll. Everybody sign in. <laughs> Council member Morell present. Council member Jeruso present. Council member Thomas present. Senator Harris present. Representative Hilferty in route. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez present. Mr. Lewis present. We have a quorum. Thank you very much. First up, we have committee organization, which is, I think today's the drop dead date to do that. Uh, I will entertain motions for the chairperson. The motion to recommend uh, Council Member Morrell. Thank you. Can I get a second? Seconded by Council, by, sorry, by Senator Harris. Uh, please vote your machines. It's not coming on to you. Oh, okay, there we go. There we go. All right, six yeas, no nays. I uh, I won the lottery, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> First up and only up, we have the ordinance calendar number thirty three nine three seven, which uh, the committee will consider an ordinance establishing an appeal process for disputed sewage and water board bills. This is authored by myself. Uh, we have had some very productive meetings with representatives with Sewage and Water Board. As many of you are aware, due to the uh, interesting process of the New Orleans City Council with how we amend bills, uh, amendments happen at the council level. We have had some communications regarding uh, some concerns that they have, and we will continue to work through those. But I do think that it is beyond time sensitive that we move this process forward as we continue to have a glut of constituents who reach out to all of the council members as well as their legislators regarding billing issues. Mr. Druso. Oh, thank right. you, Mr. Chair. Um, a, a couple of things. Number one, we just finished telling Cox about where we were in our district with complaints um, of the external agency complaints that we get. Sewage and Water Board represents 82% of the total amount of issues that we have. And in conference with you, Mr. Chair, I'm going to probably offer some amendments that I'd like to work with everybody on and go through those very quickly. Some of them are more procedural in nature than substantive, but some are more substantive. Uh, briefly, to go through about seven or eight of these uh, to amend the definition of actual bill so that it requires a meter reader to read the bill if we're, if we're doing that for the time being until AMI is installed. For billing, what, what constitutes a valid estimate and whether or not that's a last uncontested read or two or three shall be the estimate. Number three is about how bill disputes can be contacted by residents to Sewage and Water Board and in the multiplicity of ways, phone, email, office location, mail, fax, all being sufficient forms. Number four has been one that's been in my craw for a long time that has refused to be implemented, which is having um, commercial representatives for Sewage and Water Board, hotels and uh, major businesses should not have to call 5-2 Water. There needs to be somebody like at other utilities who can do that. Um, when under 159-5, customers will be notified. Next one is another one that's been in my craw, which as I don't understand why, if there's going to be an adjudicatory hearing, why the hearing officer can't require the documentation ahead of the hearing and make recommendations based on those rather than uh, making people go through the process. I think you have a flagging provision in here. I want to make sure that that's spelled out as well. And then the last one is frequently sewage and water board requires people to have plumbers reports to contest a bill. And I feel like that's an unfair practice when, um, you know, sewage and water board should be able to tell whether or not the leak is on their side or the other. So um, I, I, I applaud the fact that we have a place to start and, and that we have work, but I just want to recommend some friendly amendments to the chair and to this committee. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you. I want to also make aware, may, make the public aware of a couple of the suggestions that were made to me by Sewage and Water Board that I thought were reasonable. One was streamlining the administrative process and that right now the current ordinance contemplates two hearing officers before it goes to the council for final appeal. Um, there is communication and consideration of the possibility of having one joint hearing officer um, that deals with well, we're still working out the kinks on how that person would be appointed who would pay for it. But the idea would be that having a more independent hearing officer who would hear that direct appeal and the next appeal, the next that uh, that recommendation would go straight to the council versus having a second hearing officer who would then hear it, which would extend that process. It would also create a just more streamlined and possibly more cost uh, cost efficient process. Additionally, and some of these times we have both in the administrative hearing process with a variety of 30s and 45 days, it has the possibility of making an appeal uh, through all the various step, steps take a much more extended, extended period of time. We're already in conversation on how to reduce those periods, both on behalf of the customer and sewage or water board to get to final resolution faster. Um, those are but two of the examples that I thought were reasonable requests by sewage and water board that would lead to better outcomes. I am no doubt that between this meeting and the full council meeting that many council members will like yourself as a Jerusalem will have different things they want to work on. Um, we will endeavor to um, get all of those amendments together and I will work diligently with council member Thomas it is more than likely we have a public a public works committee hearing to have further consideration of those amendments in a public fashion, just so that everyone can hear what's going on. And it would also give a sewage and water board another attempt to kind of weigh in on where they are on those various amendments before we go to a full council hearing on those. So uh, I know he, he motioned to make me chair, but he will also still have to deal with this as chairman in that capacity. So I think he's more than willing to do so. So uh, is there any additional comment at this time on behalf of any of the members or from representative sewage and water board at this time yes press your button so they can make sure they hear you yeah just to it's important for us that we have a clear understanding um in regards to how we set goals and having the conversation about constraints and limitations in regards to resources in a way that the goals that we said, whatever those are, are realistic and smart goals, right? Uh, goals that we're able to achieve. Uh, one thing that is of concern to the sewage and water board is for this committee, despite having you know mutual goals, which is to improve our customer's experience in any way that we can, is to set unrealistic, unrealistic expectations that will eventually lead to failure, right? And disappointment uh, for everyone involved, not just us, but also our customer base. Um, so happy to provide additional information at any given time regarding um, resource limitations and constraints. Um, and how do we get to a point where we can determine realistic expectations to come out successful in this mutual endeavor that we have. I think you want to add for it. Yeah, I'd just like to add for the record, uh, Mr. Chairman, the, you know, there, there is an Administrative Procedures Act, the legal process that defines how hearings have to be conducted. So there will be uh, time required to look through amendments and have discussion and ensure that we you know, follow legally mandated rules that, that govern sewage and water boards for, for hearings. Uh, thank you. Uh, before I get to you, Mr. Drew, so I do want to make to that last point. Uh, the Administrative Procedures Act is a legislative uh, codified body of work and we do have two legislators on the committee and I've spoken to both previously, and they are more than willing to pay on the outcome of this legislation to author legislation that will provide exemptions in the Administrative Procedures Act to get this resolved. So um, I think that this council has a, shown a repeated willingness 
that when necessary, we're willing to go to the legislature to have the law rewritten to make sure we have better outcomes. Do uh, you have any comments, Senator? All right, uh, with that, Mr. Drusso, you have other comments? Yeah, I, I, I just want to say, um, I want to work collaboratively too, but the billing system has been a failure for five years. It, it has. And um, we have tried to work with Sewage and Water Board. I, I know Sewage and Water Board is trying to work itself, but the bottom line is we have too many people who are contacting all of us on a regular basis. We have an accounts receivable that's at $120 million, Gray. I mean, lower than that. Okay, but it was at that point, at one point. It's, it, it's exceeded $100 million at one point. Um, and we have to have a process that moves faster and better for our residents. And I, I, I guess, Mr. Gonzalez, I just wanna be careful because I understand you don't wanna set unrealistic expectations, but right now it's broken and we need it fixed. And I think what we all want to do is push in a direction that ensure sewage and water board is set on a path for success, but at the same time showing better billing being done front end. And then if something is happening in the billing process, much more efficiency and in, in having customers claims handled. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, just opportunity to respond. The and, and I know we council members, mayor's office, a lot of uh, external stakeholders receive customer inquiries, customer inquiries, escalations on a regular basis. Uh, but I, I must say that a year and a half ago, when when I joined the water board, um, I remember we I received a spreadsheet that was used back then, uh, and it had a tab for every single one of the districts, and any district at any given time had around, I'm gonna say 150 or 200 escalations. At this time, the entire number of escalations that we have of all the districts combined is 120 as of, two, as of yesterday. So that's 120 escalations to council or the mayor's office. And these escalations are not specifically about billing, but also about service cuts and other issues. And this information is as of yesterday and just for context, because we have 140,000 customers, right? Um, or 140,000 meters out in the field. Um, so I completely understand, but it's not just about process. It's about, I mean, we're only as good as the execution of the process, right? So I just wanna make sure that we, when I say realistic goals, I'm not talking about not committing to aggressive goals or stretch goals, just to do so in a way in which expe expectations are just realistic again. Uh, Senator Harris. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, for me, when I, when I think about realistic expectations and, and things that uh, we expect, uh, I think through this committee, we will get to where we need to be. But one thing that I cannot expect is, and I've shared this with, 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 with the council member last week, is when I receive phone calls or, 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 or text messages or emails or whatever it may be, this one particular situation, elderly couple in their 80s, two people in a home with an $800 water bill. And they call, I reach out, it's disputed. We send someone out, there's no leak. There's a leak in the street, but there's no leak in their home. However, get the text message last week, as I stated when I spoke with, with Senator Morrell, the bill is 790 something dollars. This is an elderly couple in their eighties. They're not using that much water. We call it what it is. So we're gonna be, you know, honest and straightforward and, and direct, let's be honest, straightforward and direct. As council member DeRusso said it in a, in a nice and eloquent manner, I'm, I'm not trying to be eloquent and, 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 and nice. It's broke, we need to fix it, period. Because again, 
when we sit here and we, you know, we talk about trying to make sure that this is right and that's right and this expectation and that expectation, I agree with all of that. But when I have to go to Baton Rouge and fight for $71.7 million for the sewage and water board and people getting an $800 water bill, an elderly couple, that after 20, that, that you know, they, they've never, you know, they've never had that, you know, 15, 20 years, $70 bill and it jumped to 800. And then it's 800 for two, three consecutive months. Something's not right about that. And I'm not here to sit and to, to, you know, to play politics with this and say, oh, well, you know, woe is me and this and that. We got to fix it, period. And I think this, this committee and with the council member, with the committee that, 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 that council member Thomas is over, I think we could fix it. But what I will say is this, and I want to be 100% clear, we will fix it in here or we're going to fix it in Baton Rouge, one way or the other, period, because people don't deserve that. You know, period. So that's, that's, that's it. And Representative Hilferty is joining us. She might want to weigh in on some comments. I'll, I'll make my final comments and then she could pop in with her final comments as well. I think it's important when you look overall at what the goal was in creating this committee and what the goal is in passing this legislation. And Mr. Morgan, we're going to let you talk. I know you have a card in. Why don't you start coming up, Mr. Morgan, so you can come in. I know uh, I want to give Representative Hilferty the time to get acclimated. When we, when we began with this legislation, before we even got to this ordinance, the goal was in rebuilding public confidence in what is essentially a public utility. And one of the biggest concerns we had that we tried to address is due process and billing. Because many people felt like when they got a bill, um, first off, as Councilman Jerusa eloquently stated, just the fact that there is a perception or a reality that you have to have a master plumber's report to begin due process, that is literally a cost prohibition on someone who wants to contest a bill to begin that process. The fact that rate payers are paying for sewer, sewer water, sewage and water board employees to build the case against them, but then they have to go hire a plumber just to have a level playing field to be able to argue against why the bill is too high, that's just not fair. It's just not fair and it's not a level playing field. And I think it really bellies the underlying frustration people have with the process. I think that we've had some public debate today. I think we'll have much, much more robust public debate in Councilmember Thomas's committee as we have more of these amendments in a process that will be, the amendments will be publicly available everyone will be able to look at them. The reason why I push for this committee hearing today is because we are about to begin budget next month and I could not wait to have this first hearing till after budget. That's just simply was not gonna work. I knew that there was gonna be a second step in this process at Councilmember Thomas's committee, committee. We can do that in November and we can have something move forward in December, but people cannot wait for us in our timing for early next year, first quarter to get around to doing this because we are getting these complaints in real time. And I can tell you that, and I'll be very candid because I, I, I'm not quite, I've, on this council, I've learned to be less blunt. In the legislature, I was more like Mr. like Mr. Harris, but I've tried to become less so because my colleagues say that I'm, I'm a little rough sometimes, but I will say this. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There it goes. But what I will say is this. I think it's important to state publicly and with absolute certainty, this council will not consider rate increases or stormwater fees until billing is resolved and public confidence has reached a level that the public will tolerate it. And I will tell you right now, and you've seen the polling of our agencies in the city, the public is not there. And this is an opportunity for the Sewage and Water Board to work with our legislators, work with our council members to say, here is the problem, we're gonna fix it and begin to rebuild that public confidence because it is not there. And I mean, like I said, I don't wanna speak for all my colleagues. I know I speak for many of the ones up here. The way things currently stand, a rate increase is DOA. 
All right, uh, Mr. Morgan, then Ms. Hilferty. Go ahead, Mr. Morgan. Good evening, Council. On your last scenario, what you had to address it has satisfied a lot of questions that was in my head that you rendered the questions to, the answer to. But what the people are really battle and disturbed about is this. The bills goes up, post service, nasty attitudes when they acquired the body. And what really battles them that takes the cake is this. All right, they raise this, they raise that, they raise this, they raise that, and all the money the federal government gives them. You understand? It's still not enough. Look, you got money coming in from the infrastructure that they haven't even used, and they still want more money from the people asking them, and they haven't ate up the money that is on the plate from the infrastructure. That's greed, man. That's greed. That's not in the people's interest. And what really bothers the people the most, I gave a prize to anyone that could give me a question in our organization that was worth me coming down here today. I put up a $50 because I wanted to see who was going to come up with the best solution and the best answer for me to bring to your people. And you know what it was? Miss Janice won. She asked the question. She said, Mr. Morgan, you asked him for me. How is it that they directed Kobach could give himself a $57,000 raise and the city is in the condition that it's in now? a soldier water boy and the best part about it mr johnson said that i was in management for 35 years and i was on the time and i was on the set salary ask them how is it that a manager in Kobear could be on a set salary and also when the stone comes to you it's on the time clock generating five thousand dollars that show you right there that the man is greedy and the man is not right and he's conniving and he's not in the best interest of the people. Come on, councilman. Here was a statement I made that day when I was in this council. They thought y'all was fools, but the day show them you ain't that damn fool. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Uh, Sen oh, sorry, Representative Telferty. It's promoted you. Thank you. Representative Elferty. Thank you, Councilman Morrell. What's ridiculous about all this is our constituents are being forced to prove a negative. They're being forced to prove that they did not use thousands of dollars of water in a month. And in doing that, then they have to hire a plumber to show that there's not a break on their side of the property, which I've heard from multiple people. And in all of the accounts I've heard, the break is not on their side of the property. And as we all know, plumbers don't come to your house for free. You have to pay three, $400 for them to come say, no, the break is not on your side of the property. And then you still have to argue with sewage and water board. And I think that's the frustration. It's the time, it's the money, it's the fear of water being turned off. It's all of those things for our constituents that that is the point of us being here and that's what we need to address. Um, and, and there is a public, con there's no public confidence right now in sewage and water board. And that's both on the billing side as well as the side of making sure those pumps are turned on and functioning during um, weather events. So hopefully we'll be working on the billing side of this in this uh, as these hearings go on. Thank you. Mr. Batiste, are you filling out a card right now? Okay, well then we'll get to Mr. Batiste and then that's the end of public comment. I have no other cards. Are there any online comments, Aaron? No, sir? Okay, Mr. Batiste, come give your comments at which point we will vote on the ordinance to go through the council process. Good, good afternoon, council. Thank you, Jimmy Harris, from coming here saying and getting them all to meet us. That's what I'm talking about. But all y'all council members, I want to take my hat off to y'all because y'all can't play up the sewage and water board. People are struggling in the communities. Just like Jimmy said, they got people, elderly get like 
$800. And every time you saw, call Suge and Waterboard, they talk about the appeal. But let's talk about the appeal. The appeal process is a joke because people call and appeal their bills. But how do your bills go higher? And then I want to talk about the president of the Suge and Waterboard, who is our mayor. That's why I'm recalling her now. But at the end of the day, we're not taking it from the community. We're relying on all y'all council members up there to do y'all job. Because Suge and Waterboard has stole and robbed from the people. Have you looked at the infrastructure? Have you looked at the streets? Ain't nothing going on with Suge and Waterboard. Nobody wants to work for Suge and Waterboard. But have y'all checked out their human resource department? Y'all haven't. Tell Suge and Waterboard, tell y'all about the investigation going on, where the workers have been getting their families tax credit, I mean, credits on a bill, $10,000, That man ain't going to tell y'all about that. That's what y'all need to be looking in. Sergeant Waterboard has done enough, and we are not going for it. But I was impressed by this council, and you know it's hard to impress nobody. But all y'all, y'all taking a step for the people, and like you said, JP, the people are hurting in the community, and they're relying on y'all. And what y'all showed today, I know the people are very happy, you know. And then I heard Sergeant Waterboard saying 2023 they want to go up on somebody but we must hold all of them accountable. I wish Mr. Corbell was here because I was here for him today. We 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 raised this man's salary. I talked to Stevie Wonder last night. He said he could see Susan Waterboard robbing us. So I want to commend y'all because y'all deserve to be commended when y'all doing something great for the community and thank that sister. I don't have her name. Um, I think the one that passed the bill, Hilford. There. Oh, she here? She there. I've been right there. waiting to meet and talk to you, sister. I want to thank you for standing up because you took the stand, and that's what I'm talking about in this city. So I want all y'all to know I thank y'all because I don't want to have to recall none of y'all, but thank y'all. Thank you, Mr. Batiste. There are no further comments. Uh, I will entertain a motion. Motion to adopt. Mr. Jeruso moves. I'm sorry, Ms. Thomas moves. Mr. Jeruso seconds. Please vote your machines. Uh, yay. Okay, five yays, no nays. The I'm a yay. I know. That's what I'm counting you as a yay. You're a yay. Five yays, no nays. The council member, I think that would be seven. Oh, seven. I'm sorry. <laughs> seven yays, no nays. Uh, the ordinance is released and reported to the council to be further. A move towards Mr. Thomas's committee for further consideration. Uh, thank you, Mr. Senator Harris moves that we adjourn. Councilman Thomas seconds. Is there any objection? Hearing none, we're adjourned. Okay. Got it. Appreciate it.